Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. So I'm going to talk about failure. What is failure? What is it? I mean, the definition in the dictionary is a lack of success. So then what's success? Well, they say success is the accomplishment of an act or an objective. So you've got failure on one side and you've got success on the other. It seems to me to be on some sort of a scale. And we're human beings and we're somewhere in the middle of that because to be human is to err, is to fail, is to make mistakes. So I want to talk to you today about that, about what I've been kind of trying to figure out for the last couple of years about failure and success and what it means to me from a human perspective. So let's take, let's take today as an example of looking at failure and success. So you all successfully applied for tickets to this morning's event, this morning's TEDx event, and you've all successfully turned up and you're all successfully sitting the way audiences have to sit. And I am successfully standing here because I've made a commitment to speak to you this morning. I'm also successfully standing on the red dot, which I've been told to do. <laughs> right? So right now, we're, we're not doing too bad. We're not doing too badly at all. But it's a scale. What happens if I kind of change it up a bit? What happens if I do this? <laughs> Cameraman's not happy. Lighting guy's not happy. But I'm still talking. And I'm still succeeding at some degree. I'm failing a little bit, but overall, I'm still succeeding. If I go back into the light, the cameraman wouldn't be happy. What happens if uh, the lights go off? I'm still talking. I'm still here. You're still listening, and I'm still presenting. What happens if the mics go off? What happens if I do this? Oh, I'm so sorry. I am so sorry. But guess what? I'm still here, or I'm still succeeding, and you're still standing there. So we, we have these constructs that we can use all the time. Is there anything else we can do? Well, I could leave the stage, couldn't I? I could walk over here as I'm talking and still come over here and I'm still giving my presentation and I could stand here and look at you, gentlemen. How are you? Good. Why did you pick me? Why did I pick yeah. you? Oh, nothing has changed, has it? I'm still here, I'm still giving a talk and you're feeling tremendous pressure right now because now yes. you're in my talk, aren't you? Yep. And you're feeling this responsibility to help me succeed and you're feeling, oh my God, I'm failing, I'm failing, I'm failing. But, but nothing has actually changed, has it? I'm still here, I'm still talking. We're all still succeeding and thank you very much for that. Bit of a round of applause for that gentleman. Thank you very much. It's just a scale doesn't really matter and yet we put ourselves under so much pressure about failing I know I have for most of my life but it's just a scale it doesn't matter as long as you're on the scale that's all that matters because if you're not on the scale you're doing nothing you're fearing and failure makes us afraid and if you're afraid you don't even try so we've got to just keep trying and as human beings that's all we have to do because like I fail all the time, all the time. It took me years to get used to it or to accept it, but we do it every single day. Sometimes we fail bigger than others. Sometimes we fail a little bit, but it's all there. So for instance, let me tell you about my life. Um, I had a successful career in, in academia. I was in the system for 14 years. My mother was so proud. In her terms, in the social status of success, I was really acing it. She'd go, Eva's in UCC, yeah. oh my God, she's doing amazing. <laughs> to her, I was really succeeding. Now, you know, there's other academics who would have pitted me differently in that line of success, but to my parents, that was a huge success, to have a daughter with a PhD who was doing a postdoc in UCC. And I did feel successful to a degree, but there was a whole other part of me that was unexpressed, my artistic, creative side. And I felt that I was failing because I wasn't matching that need, that desire that was in me. And I let it, I thought about it so many years, I thought about it when I was doing my degree in engineering, I thought about it when I was doing my masters, and I would dip my toe, get scared, and I'd come back again. And so I did nothing for years. And why? Because I was afraid to try. Because what happens if you actually succeed at achieving your dream? It's incredible. But if you don't succeed, it's terrifying. So I made a major decision in 2003. I said, I can't do this anymore. And my mother was like, oh my God, Neve, what are you doing? Throwing away all those years of study. 
14 years down the toilet. And I, I did, I went, I, I, don't know what, I don't know what I'm doing, but I have to try this, I have to give this a go. So I did, I stepped away from full-time research and I pursued a career in acting, full-time acting and performing. And that went very well, but on my scale of what I considered to be failure and success, I had some measure of success, but on my scale here, it, it, it really wasn't matching what I was really looking for because what I realized after doing that for a few years, I missed science. So then I had a major crisis. I was kind of going, I've just walked away from a career in science and engineering and now I'm a performer and now I want science again. I don't, I don't know how I'm going to do this. But I stayed on the scale and I just said, I don't know how I'm going to do this, but I'm going to try and find a way of combining the two things together. And that's where I am now. And I don't know whether I'm failing or succeeding. I have little failures and I have little successes, but I know where I'm going, so I'm on the scale. And that's all that matters to me because for many years, I wasn't even on it. And that's the thing I want to kind of share with you today. And there was one major thing that helped me in getting on the scale and not being afraid to try to achieve my dream or my goal or my objective, which is what success is, was improvisation. So when I finished um, up in academia, I began improvising with a number of improvise, impro, impro, improv groups. And there were a few principles, key principles of improvisation that I've actually brought into my life. And I think that they are great ways of seeing the world. The first one is play, just play. It's the main principle of improvisation. And when you play, you don't worry about the outcome. There is no success, there is no failure. All you're trying to do is just explore together with a team of people, so you feel very supported. The second principle is yes and. So somebody says something to you, you say yes, and what else? And then I reply, and then they say yes, and what else? So you build together and until you've created something truly fabulous. And it's because you support each other. I think there's a, there's a lot of places that I've been in before, in formal uh, workplaces where it's more no but, so you feel isolated. I did for a bit when I was doing my PhD. You feel isolated because you feel this responsibility to come up with everything. Improvisation using yes and, you feel part of something and you're all helping each other going forward. And the third principle of improvisation is just relax and have fun and just see what happens. And that's kind of what I've been doing. And it was really interesting earlier this year because I got invited by UCD Science Expression to give a workshop to um, academics to help them in their communication skills and we brought improvisation into the room. There's a participant there in the front row and we had great fun and it was lovely to see people just letting go and not being afraid to fail. They just had permission to do whatever they liked and they just shone from the inside out. And that's what improvisation has brought for me. And this year, just to prove how much I believe in what I'm doing and, and this belief that failure is just literally a scale of success, I set myself a massive task. I decided that I was just going to put it out there that I want to go to space. Yeah, I mean, I don't know how I'm going to do it. <laughs> but I said, you know what, what's the worst that can happen? I'll fail. Oh my God. But you know what, I'm on the scale. So for years I wanted to be an astronaut. I don't know if I'm going to achieve that but at least I'm on the scale and I'm moving forward step by step. So what way do I look at my life now? I look at my life as the fact that I'm succeeding through a series of magnificent failures. <laughs> Thank you very much.